type broadcast, isn't it? Hearing the producer's voice and seeing a lot of equipment, which we usually take great pains to keep concealed behind the camera. But we found that so many boys and girls, when we go on outside broadcasts, come along and say, please may we have a look at the camera, or please may we look inside your mobile control room. We thought that this afternoon, here at Wembley Base, we'd let you have a look yourselves, give you some inside information. Now, first of all, come over here and have a look at a mobile control room, as you'd see it on the road. It's a big van, full of equipment and people. And as you can see, it's only got a little window here and a door at the end, so it'd be rather difficult to get cameras inside to give you a good look. So what the engineers have done this afternoon is to take all the equipment out of the van and rebuild it on the floor here at Wembley so that we can look around in comfort. Incidentally, I should tell you now, that's one of the reasons why from time to time you'll probably hear in the background voices giving instructions and maybe a bit of machinery humming. Anyway, before we start, I'd like to give you a rough idea of what to look for inside the van. Now, the main thing inside is this. We have three screens. One, two, sorry, I'm not very good at drawing. And on those three screens appears the pictures from three cameras. Normally we use three cameras on an outside broadcast. Occasionally we use two. Very rarely we use more than three. But mostly, and certainly this afternoon, we're using three. One, two, three, like that. Now the producer inside that van is sitting at a desk, and in front of him is a control panel with three knobs on, like that. One, two, three. And he's looking at his pictures and can, by pressing whichever of these knobs he wants, one, two, or three, put whichever camera he wants on transmission so that you can see it on your screen at home. Also inside with him, is another important man known as a sound mixer who has a big desk in front of him like that with a row of knobs and the knobs control the inputs from the microphones we use on outside broadcasting because it wouldn't be much good having pictures without microphones so that you can hear what's being said as well as see. Well anyway, that's, that's just a rough quick idea. We're going to see that in a lot more detail in a minute. First of all, I want to start by introducing you to some of the people and you may have noticed on that opening shot a fellow squatting down as he is now who waved his finger at me, gave me a cue to start that's the stage manager, Alan Rees now, how are you? Fine <laughs> Good Now Alan, I wonder if you would um, tell us briefly what your job does consist of Yes, well as stage manager my job is to see to it that the show runs smoothly on the floor You remember a few minutes ago Steve showed you a picture of one of our mobile control rooms Remember that he said that the producer sits inside here worrying about pictures and cameras. Sometimes on, a, on the normal outside broadcast, this van is as far away as 200 yards. So he must have someone at the event to see to it that everything runs smoothly uh, on the floor. And my job is to see that things start at the right time, finish at the right time, that everybody has their correct properties, that artists come in when they should and go out when they should, and that captions appear in the right order and so on. And we do this with signals, uh, we see that the show goes all right with signals, and to do this, uh, we arrange hand signals with the artists. If the show is running too slowly, we can speed it up by making a sound like that. If it's going too fast, we can stretch it out. But normally, I never appear in front of the cameras. What I do is I squat down so that I'm not seen, and if I want Steve to go quicker, I speed him up. If I want him to go slower, I stretch him out. And if I want him to cut, I make a sign like that. And all to the instructions you're getting through the headphones from That's the That's right, all from, the, all from the producer on the headphones. Getting any instructions now? Yes, as of this moment, he's saying, keep it going, come on. So, cue commentary. Right ho. Well, anyway, I think the best place to start is to have a look where the picture starts, the television camera. I'm going to have a look at this camera that's looking at me. There's a very good friend of mine behind it, cameraman Stan Parkinson. How are you, Stan? Hello, Steve. Now then, what about a look at your camera? Uh, well, this is the camera proper, the lower half. The top half is my viewfinder. Which is just like a, a television set, isn't it? You've got a wrapped up in the back here, a little screen like one that, to That's watch right. on at home. Just in here, I can move this up and down with my head. Uh -huh. I can see what's going on. Now, how to compare this with any other camera is rather difficult because we have lenses at the front 
similar to an ordinary camera, but inside it's completely different. As you see, it's like more or less a radio set. set yes. All this stuff, of course, stand being for turning the, the picture into electricity, which goes along the cable back to the mobile control. That's quite correct, sir. Good. Now, Stan, this question of lenses on the front, you've got four lenses in, or you can put four in, I believe. Yes, we can put four can. lenses in. Uh, only the top one is used, of course, at a time. Yes. But we have a... It's quite easy to, m to, to move the appropriate lens in position, well, as just required by the producer. Mm -hmm. We listen to the producer on the headphones, you see, and he'll tell us. And unlike Stan, you've got this microphone here, too, so that you can answer him back if you don't like what he says. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Look, how about... Um, Explain yes, a little further about this lens business. I have a couple of lenses down here. The uh, small lens is the widest lens we have, which is the nearest we can get to what the eye would see from this camera. In other words, if you put that in the camera, the camera would see roughly what I see with my eye. Well, it's the, the nearest lenses. we can get to it. Uh -huh. yes. uh, this one is similar to placing a tele. tele uh, telescope in front of the eye and yes. looking at a thing So if you, if, you, if you push this in front of the, in front <coughs> of the camera's eye, it's equivalent to my doing that That's right, with yes. a telescope. Yes. Right, well supposing we prove it. Right. Well, we want something to look at. What about uh, looking at uh, Ken Lane up on the other camera up there? Change to the wide angle lens. Mm -hmm. And there we have Ken at a distance. Yes. By changing to the narrow angle and focusing the lens, That's we can see. You don't see on the air as a rule, cameraman. I, mean, I hope not. Let's hand to uh, Ken, come <laughs> from behind the camera, let's have a look at you. There he is. <laughs> Very nice, too. Right, Stan. Well, Many thanks for a look, but of course your camera has got limitations, hasn't it? If you're mounted yeah. on uh, this I can't move tripod, around. you can't move around very much. No. So I'm going along to look at Graham Turner's camera, see what we can do with a bit of movement. Right. Okay, come on in, Graham. Further, 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 further. Okay, don't go down, don't go down my throat. Well, straight away you can see one thing that Graham Turner can do on his camera that Stan can't do on his. He can move in quite quickly and swiftly onto anything he wants to look at. Anyway, come from behind there, Graham. I want to talk to you. I, I, can't, I can't see you. Look, um, supposing you tell us a bit about this camera, Dolly. What yes. it can do that uh, Stan's camera can't. Well, as Stan's camera can't move, this is got complete freedom of movement. You can go in on static objects and track back off them as you want. Oops. Yes. It also goes high and low in elevation viewpoints. If you stand in front, we'll show you just how much All it right. can go high. And Where do you want me to stand? Just about there. Right. Let's go down. Come in one. Come in two. Come in three. Of course, you don't, you don't usually do that on transmission, do you, Graham? Just to illustrate the point. Also, uh, if, if you're um, televising an outside fast moving sports event, hmm? you've got um, a 360 degree circle. What, you can go all, all, all the way around? And pretty fast? Yes. Right out, I see you do it. Whoa! Try it again, back the other way. And look, Graham, this business of um, dollying in and out. Now, it looks easy, but I think you'd agree with me, it's, uh, it's quite a skilled job, isn't it? Yes. You've obviously got to judge or make sure you've got plenty of room to get through narrow openings and corridors and round machines in patches and things like that. Mm. And um, also you've got to watch, make sure it gets in the right position to give you the correct angle of view on a shot. And yes. Like I mean, that. if you're changing from room to room, say, in a factory, and you've got the corridor and Len at the back that makes a mistake, Jams you. Precisely. You're really in a pickle. Yes, we can't get out. Mm. So. Sh uh, what about the signals you uh, you give him to to work on? Well, uh, if we want to go in, I give it si then a signal like that, and according yes. to how fast I move it, so it will go quicker. 
In other words, Len really works with you as a team just on the twitch of a finger, knows yes. exactly what you want. Yes, precisely. Well, look, thanks, Graham. And um, could you now track back and take a picture of me, because I'm going over to look at yet another type of camera. And the next type of camera I want you to have a look at is what we call a zoom. This terrific looking piece of mechanism, mechanism in the front is a lens, a zoom lens. And I think probably the best person to tell you about how it works and what it does is the chap who works it, and that's Ken Lane up here on the back. How about it, Ken? Can well, you I explain it all? I can't tell you how it works. It'll take too long. But, um, what, do you mean take two or three hours in a book of mathematics? Two or three days with me. <laughs> it would take uh, an awfully long time to really explain the uh, lens elements and the rest mm. of the gubbins and the little metric box in the front there. What about where you use it particularly for a start? Um, well, on football is the most common show where you'll see the zoom lens used. But, the, um, the effect you get of going, going straight down over the top yeah, of the crowd's head. It gives you the impression that the camera is moving mm. and all the time it's static. Well, mm. That's the main thing. The well, best thing to do is demonstrate it. Well, let's see our Mr. Duncalf. Ah, yes, right over. There's Bill Duncalf, the producer. And actually, of course, the camera hasn't moved an inch. It's all been done by Graham's lens. Let's see how fast you can do it. That's all. Let's see. Have a few Which people doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> look, I'll tell you what. Go on to the chap next door, because he's the next one I want to talk to. Doesn't he look worried? <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's Jimmy Hartwright, who is the senior engineer, and he's in charge of all the equipment here. And I'm going to be able to have a word with him. Thanks for the demonstration, Ken. You better keep a picture of him while I go over. Oh. <coughs> oh, hello, Jimmy. Hello, Steve. What do you want to see us do? Well, earlier on, when I was chatting back there, I was explaining that the camera turns the pictures into electricity and it comes back to the racks here, mm. where you and your engineers look after it and control it. And I don't think many people have any idea of what might happen to a picture if the engineers weren't constantly yes. if you know, we on the make, alert. If we make a mistake. Uh, yes, make one now. Turn the wrong we'll Make one now, shall we? Yes. Right, will you hurry? What a ghastly effect. I look as I'm coming through a yes. piece of fog or a photographic negative. Can you turn me back, Jim? I'm getting worried. Yes, there we are. <laughs> That's better. In fact, if you, if, you, if you really weren't on the alert all the time, everything would be... Could you upside, upside down, down, yes? Just yes. like that. Yes, I see. Like that, yes. <laughs> Literally <laughs> upside down. Blood's running to my head, Jim. Turn me the right way up again. Well, that's a convincing oh, demonstration yeah. anyway. <laughs> Look, I wonder if I can ask you to move yes, just for a tick, because I want to get in here to have a, a word with mm -hmm. Bill Duncan, the producer. Uh, Bill, earlier on, when I was drawing that rather rough diagram, I told them about the, uh, as you know, about your screens, your one, two, three screens up there, yes. and your control panel down here. Yes. But now we've actually arrived at it, I wonder if you could, you know, give a bit more detailed yes. explanation. Well, um, let's have um, a closer, just a moment. Camera one, go wide again. Will you want to show the racks in front? Can you cope with that? Yeah. Right. There we are. Coming to one. Now, uh, there we are. Um, you can see in front of me, if you go left one, turn left, you can see one, two, and another screen, three. Now, uh, those are um, the... I'm coming back to two now. This is a bit tricky. I've got to do about three things at once. Uh, one, will you go tight now on the panel? Um, those are the three screens which show what each of the three cameras is looking at at this particular moment. Well, now, while you've been watching this program, you've been conscious, of course, of the fact that pictures have been changing fairly rapidly. Uh, and they've been... Uh, all the way through the program, the picture that you've been looking at, we've been intercutting from one camera to another. Well now, how is that done? Well, let's have a look. In front of me here, um, I've got, as you can see, three buttons marked one, two, and three. And each of those buttons represents camera one, or camera two, or camera three. Now at the moment, as you can see, the button number one is pressed in, which means that camera one is on the air, which indeed it is. That is camera two's button. Now, if we want to see what camera two is looking at, we just press that button so, and uh, unfortunately for it, it's looking at me. Let's come back again rather quickly to camera one. Um, shall we see what camera three is looking at? It's looking at a different angle of my hand on the same panel. Let's come back again to two. Well, now, I can, um, in addition, 
to cutting quickly from picture to picture so we can if we like uh, be rather cunning and mix our pictures through each other like they do in the cinema when you go to the pictures you often notice how the pictures um, mix or dissolve through one another let's see how we do that shall we um, we're looking at camera one at the moment shall we say we want to also mix in shall we say camera two well now for that I go up to camera two's other button each camera's got two buttons there 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 and there let's go up to camera two's other button I press it and then I go over to this uh, what looks like an aircraft throttle control and if we push it a lot of noise suddenly arrived from somewhere we must expect these little troubles because we're out in the open working in unfamiliar circumstances let's get back to our picture I push both those levers up and you can see the other picture coming through it now, if I continue to push all the way up the picture dissolves and I'm now looking at what ca camera 2 is looking at similarly if I come back again I can see what camera 1 is looking at there's my hand pulling it down I can if I like fade out all the pictures altogether and that's done rather like this here we go goodbye right about time we came back again okay right there we are now we've still got pictures mixed up we take one out and we're left where we are now you may have noticed at the beginning of the picture uh, and we'll ask one of the cameras to give us the caption if we may at the beginning of the um, program you saw the title um, inside information and then through that crept the picture of the scene around us um, at this moment shall we see how we did that now let's go over for the moment to camera three which as you can see is looking at Alan Rees the SM who has got beside him the caption now we'll ask Alan who can hear me on those headphones to line up the caption that is to say he brings it in 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 come along in you come Fit for it. right go easy now right now see if you can square it up put it down camera has now squared it up and now let's be rather cunning and bring the general scene of activity through by pressing the buttons and doing a little hand control so and there we have what you saw at the beginning namely the title and the picture and now let's take the wording out as you were <laughs> I mean let's take the wording out and leave the picture as it is and I think it's about time we stopped on me Steve that you came back and took over because um, if camera two will now kindly come in avoiding me and go to the lady on my left I think I've done enough talking um, this is the time when really I want to know Pat Pat Smith is production secretary and Pat is holding a stopwatch in the right on the pencil to the left and she knows what she's doing with it. But <laughs> Pat, um, tell, will you tell people what your job is or what you think it should be? Yes, certainly. Um, well, I keep the place in the script and I watch the three screens in front of us to see that the cameras are lined up on the right shots, they're looking at the right things at the right times. And I also take an overall timing of the program on my stopwatch, tell the producer how we're getting on so that he can tell the SM whether we're going too fast or too slow and you know generally you're keep prepared an eye to make a things. cup of tea too are you? <laughs> yes oh, afterwards right. how are we doing time we're, we're doing very well at the moment we're just on time spot on we yes. really are we? okay two come away well many thanks i'm going on round the corner to right have a word with the bye 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 now remember i told you that um there's another very important man here who looked after all the sound that went for the pictures and this is the important man cedric beadle and cedric a few words about all this stuff you have here and how it works. Um, all the microphones, Steve, are connected up to the back of this bottom panel, mm -hmm. um, as you showed it on your diagram over there, mm -hmm. and they are connected by means of these um, kind of big controls, which are just like volume controls on your ordinary television set at home, you see. So each, each one of these controls controls That's a separate right. microphone. By the way, I think you should put a point in here, Cedric, as to why you do use so many microphones. Yes, in that um, if we were doing just one person <coughs> Uh, talking all the time, one microphone would do. Mm. But if we were going to a factory or somewhere like that, where um, we did it in various sections, various workshops, or, some, or something of that nature, you see, we'd have to have a microphone in each workshop. Yes. And then I can go from one workshop to the other, 
as the commentator goes round, or as the programme goes round. You have to keep your eyes peeled on, on yes. the pictures so that you move your sound along with the pictures all the time. Yes, if we were in one shop, mm. that, of course the mic in that shop would be faded up. If we went to another shop, the microphone in that shop would come up, and the, the, the sound would go with the picture, wouldn't it? It would. And, um, and of course on orchestras too. You use yes, like not so much on orchestras as things like dance bands, where each kind of sext of the band is um, kind of spotted with a, its own, own mic. You may have one mm -hmm. for the drums or and the trumpet, you see, mm -hmm. uh, one for the piano or anything like that, you see. And um, mix them all together to get just the right balance. Yes. Of course, you're yes, talking of balance, you're, you're even controlling the... Uh, yes, the sound now is, is going out on this, on this meter You can fade me out just like that yes. and still inclined, could you? Yes. Coming back Just again. like that, no trouble at all. Just as we'll fade the picture out, we can fade the sound out. And what about um, this one labelled a uh, uh, gramophone there? That's today, right. Is it? Um, we have gramophones, you heard them when we first started the program, yes. uh, the signal mm. tune. The gramophone is connected up to that volume control. When I fade that up and the grams are playing, you hear the, hear the gramophone on your... You just put it yes. on top of the rest of the sound. <coughs> on your set of hands. And then from uh, there? Yes, out of that panel into the top one on a very simple chord like that. Yes. And from the output of the amplifier... Just make that makes it louder, makes yes. Makes the signals bigger, that's right. It goes to the post office line and you hear it at home. And all right. the time I have to watch the level of the actual sound on the meter, which you can see, I expect, it flickers uh, up and down yeah, as we talk, as we doesn't talk, it? Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a very right. good thing. Well, thanks, Cedric. I'm going around to look at some of your gear, if I may. Yes, I'll be listening for you. Right ho. Well, starting off with gramophone, I always rather enjoy this. It's a thing I like to play with. Anyway, um, when we use a piece of music for a program, we sometimes find that the music we want to use is in the middle of a gramophone record, not at the beginning. And that, with a normal gramophone, would be rather difficult to uh, cope with. But uh, with this, we can do it very nicely. Jo John, will you demonstrate? Get John Byrne here to show you just how he does it. This is the record that we use to open the program, you see. Mm -hmm. We find the piece of music we want, and then we mark it with a wax pencil. Which means that we can find the place. We also have a very fine control. If you look at the pickup page, you'll see it moving just a little bit one just way or another bit. until it's just over the yellow mark, or rather the needle's just over the yellow mark. When we have the right place, we drop the pickup arm and fade the music in with this knob here, like this. Thanks very much indeed, John. Um, another piece of sound equipment under Cedric's control is this microphone that's picking up my speech now, the thing we call the boom mic. Now, the boom mic is operated by a very skilled gentleman who stands up there in the middle, and wherever I go, he can follow me with this mic. Now, watch, you see, I can sort of walk across here, chatting casually to you as I go. He follows me, and then if I suddenly decide that I, I feel like walking backwards away from him, doesn't dismay him in the slightest, because he simply unwinds his fishing rod and follows me, and then if I suddenly stop and decide that I'm going to walk forward again, well, he just keeps following, just like that. Normally, of course, this microphone isn't seen in the picture. It's hanging just outside the frame where you can't quite see it. Anyway, the next thing I wanted to show you was um, something that I expect you probably are familiar with, because this is a type of microphone that you do quite often see in the picture. It's an interview mic. You know what an interview is. You do. Alan, come and be interviewed. <coughs> you know, you get this sort of thing. Uh, now, this is Mr. Charlie Staircase. You mean? Um, now, tell me, Mr. Staircase, I believe you make um, wooden toes for centipedes that have blossomed by frostbite. Yes, yes. Um, how long have you been in this interesting occupation? Well, um, off and on, man and boy, two months. You see what I mean? Well, that's all right for interviews, but supposing I was sitting in a crowd commentating on a football match, and uh, the crowd is cheering its team on, making quite a lot of noise, well, this mic wouldn't be very suitable. I'll show you what I mean by that. Do you mind being a crowd? Would you go and get your crowd props? Crowd. Right-o. Now, you be a crowd, and I'll do, try and do a commentary on a football match. Right. Okay, where you go, crowd. What's the matter? up. <laughs> All right. Right. Right-o, you go and be a crowd. Well, 
See, I'm not getting very far while he's making all that noise. But that is a situation we can cope with, because we have a different sort of mic. Thank you, Cedric. A thing we call a lip mic. And the trick to this is that the microphone will only pick up sounds that are quite close to it. So if I hold it up to my lips, it'll pick up my voice, but it'll pick up very little else. Now, look, if you'll be a crowd again, a really yes. good crowd this time, make yes. plenty of good noise, crowd. and I'll try once again doing a spot of commentary. One crowd coming up. Well, good afternoon, and welcome to Wembley for a perfect day for football. It's a bright blue sky, slight frost, and we're waiting now for the teams to come out on the field. See what I mean? Lip mic can cope with all sorts of noise. Thank you, Cedric, very much. Well, that brings me pretty well to the end of our story for this afternoon. There's still more people that go to make a television outside broadcast unit whom you haven't met. They're the riggers. They're the men who take the cables for cameras and microphones, very often over rooftops and all sorts of awkward places. And there's the lighting engineer who lights the show. Actually, I'm surrounded by lights now, all very carefully placed so the camera won't see them. But if it wasn't for those lights, you wouldn't see me either. And last, but certainly not least, the gentlemen of the post office, the engineers who come to every outside broadcast we do. They just come in quietly and wherever we may be, fix up one of these little boxes on the wall. I've seen them in all sorts of places on the sides of buildings. I've even seen them nailed to trees at race courses. And they just quietly collect our work, our sound and our vision, and send it back along GPO telephone lines for transmitters so that it can reach you in your homes. If it wasn't for them, again, there'd be no program. Well, I hope you've enjoyed looking at this equipment as much as we've enjoyed showing it to you. And I'm going to say goodbye from me now and leave it to Bill Duncalf, the producer, to sign off. Okay, stand by camera two, coming to you now. Right, three on caption, stand by grams. Right, Q grams. Fade, sound and vision.